G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. My latest video on the FGR2 sort of left a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I don't normally like talking about nasty situations or something that might be a little bit negative and pessimistic. However, we're not going to be doing that today. In fact, we are going to be putting our positive pants on and having a look at the F8U2 Crusader 2? It, it's it's the one that has the wing that tilts. So I, I continuously mix up all of these three planes. For some reason, the F7U Cutlass, the A7D Corsair 2, and the F8U or F8 Crusader 2. I keep getting them mixed up, but we have the one with the tilty wing, so that's all that really matters. This plane is considered the last gunfighter. But uh, is it really a gunfighter in War Thunder's meta? Well, we have to have a look at it at uh, a couple of different tiers to sort of figure that one out. So the F8 Crusader at the moment sits at 10.0 and personally I think that's a really good fit. 10.0 seems to be that little bit of a middle ground between that dogfighting era or that sort of gunfighting era and that missile type era. And so having the so-called last gunfighter sit kind of neatly there at 10.0 which is admittedly in a little bit of a void but is also kind of appropriate it's good. I find it a decent fit. There are a couple of quirks with this plane though that you sort of need to figure out. First of all, it has no countermeasures and no RWR. So if you are going to be on the defensive as uh, someone flying against things like R60s, you are going to need to find ways to either not get an R60 shoved up your booty hole or find a way to dodge it without ripping your wings. And there comes the other little quirk with this plane, apart from it generating a hell of a lot of lift with those wings tilted. Anyway, the uh, plane rips itself very, very frequently. It's quite easy, uh, especially if you're above about 800, 900 kilometers per hour. So you actually have to be really careful. Not only that, but it doesn't seem to pull particularly well above those sorts of speeds. Now, moving to the gameplay here, it does have AIM 9Ds, and uh, that's kind of what I'm looking at exploiting here. I'm going to be sending a Yida off to that Harrier, and that's a fair distance for an AIM 9D, but the AIM 9D from memory has a fair burn time, and so will at least be able to make its way to that lovely little Harrier, giving it a, giving it a good old spanking. Uh, unfortunately, the Jaguar doesn't get the same level of spanking because he manages to fly out of the way and pull some fancy maneuvers, inadvertently while going for the Harrier. Now, you might be wondering, well, why didn't I go and help out the Harrier? Because he flew underneath me, and when you fly underneath someone, you basically present them the worst possible angle to come from. So, I'm going to spray at the Yak-38 anyway, pull a little bit of a vertical, because I know the moment that the Yak-38 wants to bleed his energy, or at least wants to pull a turn, he's going to bleed all of that. And then, at 4 kilometers comes a MiG-17. Now, I don't know if it's a MiG-17 AS, and so if he gets within 2.5 kilometers, I need to make sure that there isn't a missile coming straight for me. Now, why could I not use a missile on the Yak-38? Well, it's simple. We're traveling too fast. That Yak-38 is probably at about 900 kilometers per hour, and I don't really want to be uh, risking losing one of my four precious missiles at this point in time. I think I need to keep them. There are plenty of enemies around, and as you'll see, my team is starting to uh, fall apart. Now, speaking of the MiG-17, the MiG-17 has decided to give chase, although he will basically never come out on top, and the moment he turns away is the moment that I loop over. I'm going to loop over just to put myself into a little bit more of a sort of slower spot and give myself a little bit more energy, and as the MiG-17 decides he wants to fly in a straight line, I manage to rip his wingerino off. So, yeah, no more fun for you, Mr. MiG-17 AS. So, next target here is our G91 a fellow here, it's a G91YS, and the Crusader is often compared to the G91YS in its playstyle, and I think that's kind of appropriate. The G91YS pulls a lot of acceleration very quickly, and the uh, F8 Cors Corsair Crusader pulls a lot of energy as well, and it is fairly similar. There are, of course, some certain quirks, and uh, I noticed that the G91 is going to go for a sort of little bit of a vertical thing here, and then decides he's going to do some pitching and rolling. And the one thing that missiles don't really like is pitching and rolling, so I'm not going to send a Yeeta his way. So, being a little bit conservative with the missiles I think is key when you're in a full down tier. 
having that speed gives you the opportunity to play yourself a little bit like a phantom or like a like a hunter if you will and uh, in this case here there's a cl13 who i can sort of get around the battlefield and uh, send little boys their way um basically what i want to do is just keep my speed because I'm one of the fastest planes at the battle rating, not quite the fastest, but I certainly do have enough speed to really make a difference. Uh, and as people are dogfighting, I just have to go around, look for a slow target, prep an AIM-9D, and if they're within range, like this Harrier for example, uh, I just spray and get myself a nice little kill. Four kills there already on the board, and we're looking for the ace. I'm starting to think this particular Sabre is looking fairly juicy, but I can't quite get an AIM-9D, and it looks like he's just going to push straight for the head-on. I don't want any of that. Now, I have to make sure that my fuel isn't going to be uh, a problem here, and it is starting to become a problem. So I decide to send an, uh, a little present here to the other MiG-17AS, and then find that a CL-13B has magically appeared on my tail. Now, CL-13B has missiles, but I don't think this particular one has uh, equipped them, or at least has unlocked them. Taking a quick look at my team, it looks like everyone has decided to do a heck and disappear, and so I need to get myself back to base to rearm and refuel. I can't really carry a match on three minutes of fuel, not with a plane that carries an afterburner and needs to use that afterburner to stay ahead of its competition. So I am going to burn the afterburner a little bit, and as soon as I realize that the CL-13B is uh, not really a threat anymore, I'm going to basically turn around and uh, get the hell out of there. I let my teammates know that... Um, I'm basically going to go straight for the airfield. That is a fairly smart idea. At least I think I did. I can't quite remember. Uh, and I can't quite read the little preview window. But I, I think that's what I said. Or at least I, I remark it sometime along the little bit of a little bit of a timeline. But um, basically, I tell him, keep going straight. I'm heading back to the airfield. Or at least, you know, I will. So one little thing to notice with the uh, F-8 Crusader is that it has a lot of energy retention and the air brakes don't work with the gear because the uh, air brake is a very heckin' long boy and so it doesn't work in conjunction with gears or flaps I think I can't quite remember if it is both but it's a bit of a, a bit of a bastard to work with in some cases this case here I'm just sort of looking to slow myself down um, going zero throttle I have 48 seconds of fuel left and I have no enemies nearby I'm just going to ride the air brake down, but um, the thing with the this, this plane is it just retains so much energy and generates so much lift the moment you put those landing flaps on, because with the landing flaps, the wing does do a little bit of a tilt, and so you get a weird sort of ballooning effect. It's quite common if, you, uh, if you've ever flown a radio-controlled airplane that's really lightweight and just like smash the landing flaps all the way down, you'll kind of know the same feeling or the same effect. Um, it, it can be a little bit disorientating, so just be mindful of that. Uh, and I wouldn't put your landing flaps all the way out until you're at about like 300 kilometers per hour. This thing has a fairly good low speed handling. Uh, it's not like the other 10.0s where you're a little bit chonky like the uh, MiG-19 or even more chonky like the F-104s. You kind of have a little bit of lightweightness which gives you that ability to dogfight and gives you of course that ability to uh, come in at a very nice slow speed for what would normally be a carrier landing. So, with that little bit out of the way, we're gonna use some editing magic to sort of fast forward ourselves back to uh, a little bit of an engagement here. So, the G91 and uh, F5 have basically gone rearm themselves. I'm looking for a missile lock here, uh, and in this case, I'm just trying to use my energy to stay above the F5 and the uh, G91. There are two more enemies left, but I don't quite know where they are, and I almost put myself in front of the YS's guns. The uh, F5 here is kind of looking a little bit juicy, so what I'm thinking is to perhaps maybe go after the uh, F5 in this case. Now, I need to make sure that the F5 is sort of not paying attention to me, which he is now, but he's soon going to divert his attention to a friendly aircraft, which is very, very nice and helpful. This is going to give us a little bit of a situation where maybe we can get someone who's distracted, maybe we can get someone who is not quite paying attention. And it seems like the F5 is our uh, little candidate here, but the CL-13B decides to appear out of nowhere. I, di I didn't really see him. 
Um, and on top of that, we're going to have a little friend here called the F86. And you can see the AIM-9B coming towards me. There's nothing I can do. And I managed to uh, get myself a little bit of a heckin' oof, which is pretty pretty upsetting. Um, the fact that I couldn't really see the, uh, the, the guy until it was basically too late uh, is a little bit disappointing. And I think the spotting system could uh, be a little bit adjusted there. But you know what? Uh, a couple of negative points aside, this particular match was not too bad considering that the rest of the team only got three kills. So, what else are we doing here? We're going to be showing you an up tier. So, screw them down tiers, we're going to have a look at a full up tier. Now, this isn't like a full, full up tier where there are only four 10.0s and the rest are 10.7s. Although you do get that from time to time. I've, in my time playing this plane, I have experienced a few of them. Uh, and the key is just to stay on the offensive, sort of float around, look for kills that are slow. But in this case here, we're in like a sort of 10.0, 10.3 match with a few 10.7s sprinkled in the mix. This particular MiG-21 and his uh, friends, the two MiG-19s, decide that they want a tunnel vision on uh, friendly there. And I think he manages to, uh, to, to lose his plane pretty quickly. That's just uh, how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately, in this case. And I've gotten myself into the same pickle that he is. I have a lot of people interested in my plane. Maybe because it's new and shiny. Maybe because it's slow. Maybe because it's convenient. But uh, I see a Harrier. And the Harrier looks extremely juicy. I launch a missile. But unfortunately, someone else manages to eat my beans for me. So I'm just going to go for the next lot of beans. And that looks like it's going to be this MiG-21 here. But uh, he's not giving me a great angle to launch a missile. And there goes the good angle. I take my opportunity and I'm not even looking back here. I'm just going to keep going and it looks like we're going to get ourselves maybe another one. There's a MiG-21 MF and I'm just going to go for the MF because I know if I get the MF I can deal with the uh, Phantom pretty easily because I can outturn him but I only get some hits and maybe some light like uh, damage that makes it slightly inconvenient so I just launch an M9D and call it a day on the MiG-21 MF. So, just as I do that, a hunter decides he wants to join the fray, and uh, hunters, turn fighting crusaders, is not ideal. So, I'm going to go for a quick spray, obviously not getting any, uh, any dice there as such, and I need to make this engagement pretty quick. Unfortunately, my potato aim gets the better of me, and then I manage to strike a pretty nice hit. SU-17 brings an R-60 to the table, but unfortunately for him, it just manages to miss, and I just get it out of the way. It was pretty lucky, to be honest. So, once I've done that, a little bit of a quick spray on the Hunter. Next target here, looking towards either the SU-17 or the SU-17. And I choose, you guessed it, the SU-17. Now, again, not looking back, I managed to get myself a nice missile kill. And the SU-17, again, the uh, the one that I didn't kill with the missile, decides he wants to have some fun with, uh, with, with guns. And enjoy some stuff from the last gunfighter, like panic, fly uh, panic shooting just to sort of uh, spray and pray when your opponents are in a weak spot because you, I don't know, nerves. This kind of stuff happens. I would honestly recommend that you take your time, try and make your enemies nice and slow, and don't commit to an enemy. Don't try and sit behind them. Just do what you can to distance yourself relatively where, where you're going to get your shots on target. So, in this case here, I'm not going to go for the shot. I'm not going to waste my shot. I'm going to ham hammer the afterburner, use that low speed acceleration or that mid speed acceleration to uh, really write home the uh, benefits of the last gunfighter. And the Phantom FG-1 just has no chance here. There's nothing he can do. He's uh, caught with his pants down as such. And as he levels out a little bit, I go for a couple of shots and shear his wing off, leaving me with 18 bullets in four guns. Well, wasn't that a convenient spot there. The Mirage 3E is a new jet that I need to do a video on. My god, that thing came in nice and hot. But I tell you what the Mirage is not good at. Surprisingly, the Mirage is not good at turn fighting. And you might think, well, it's got a delta wing design. You know, you'd think it would be good at turn fighting, but no, actually. The delta wing basically gives it good, good angle of attack and basically means that it can do crazy things pretty quick. So... In this case here, crazy things are, I don't know, like flying in front of the Mirage's guns like an idiot, but uh, we've managed to resolve that. You see, the way this particular plane works is it's basically got a fair bit of lift and a fair bit of acceleration. Now, that lift is going to exceed that of the Mirage 3E. As you can see, I'm clearly winning this dogfight without a shred of a doubt, and if I had a little bit more ammunition, I 
probably would have come out on top without no issues at all. I have to now rely on my teammates because I don't have any ammunition. I've sprayed it all, wasted it all, like a big monkey, and uh, now I'm starting to get low on fuel. So I basically need to just bait the Mirage for my teammates, and that's kind of where the fun ends. Although, I have to say, it is a nice feeling to uh, give your allies a little bit more of a leg up. So, the uh, last gunfighter, is it really that bad? Is it really that amazing? I would definitely consider this plane a support fighter in a full up tier. There's no shred of a doubt there that this plane is not going to be carrying any matches. It is, however, going to be excellent if you can find the planes that are distracted, the planes that are not paying attention, or alternatively, things that uh, are in a little bit of trouble that you can give a, a little bit of a helping hand. It's things that, uh, you know, if, if you're, let's say you're a, you're a good guy, right, and your your friendlies are in a little bit of trouble, they're in a little bit of a little bit of pickle, um, not quite a pickle rick, but, but a pickle nonetheless, and uh, they need a little bit of help. Giving them that hand with the uh, F8U is, is kind of where you're supposed to be. That's kind of the meta of this plane. It's not to go out there and be the hero. It's to be the hero by saving everyone else's backsides. And for me, honestly, that's not too bad. That's, that's not a bad position to be in. However, you do need to rely on your teams being uh, not complete dog shit for that to work. Unfortunately, you don't get that all the time. But I'll tell you what, when you do... It's really nice. Anyway, ladies and gents, that'll do it for today's video. Total of like 11 kills for, for a single video. Isn't it beautiful? Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.